So there's a ton of stuff happening in the AI news world, way too many things to make a separate video for each. So I figured I'd just go ahead and do one video to get us all caught up. First of all, OpenAI just launched tasks, allowing users to schedule actions and reminders within ChatGPT. Thanks to Rowan Chang for posting this. Tasks can be one-time reminders or recurring actions like a daily news rundown with up to 10 active tasks able to be scheduled at a time. You should have a 4.0 with scheduled tasks model that's going to appear from the drop-down menu. And ChatGPT will also be able to suggest frequent tasks from a user's chat history. It's rolling out to Plus, Team, and Pro ChatGPT subscribers over the next few days. Here's kind of what that's looking like. I'm very excited. We've been waiting for this for a while. We've heard rumors about this. There's a new subdomain, so we know it's rolling out. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, of course, Wes has access to this model. He is paying $200 a month for the pro mode, the unlimited mode. Of course, Wes has it. But you'd be wrong, Wes does not. What I do to upset the powers that be at OpenAI, I don't know. This feature will be rolling out to all those users over the next couple of days. So if previous rollouts are any indication, I expect to be last. I figure I'd just complain a little bit. Also looks like there's a new subdomain operator.chatgpt.com that's available. Back in the days, if you can figure out like the URL slug that OpenAI used to name their uh, new models, you could just access it ahead of whenever they decided to roll it out to your particular account. Whenever I used to figure it out, I would post it on YouTube and Twitter to kind of share my findings with the other people. Actually, now that I think about it, that's probably why now I'm always dead last for any new feature rollout. OpenAI, if you're watching, I repent. Please let me back in. If you see that new model in your drop-down menu in ChatGPT, let us know. Is it, in fact, awesome? Let me know in the comments. In other OpenAI news, we have Adebayo Ogunlesi joins OpenAI's board of directors. Ogunlesi brings global expertise in infrastructure, finance, and strategy to advance our mission towards AI. Recently, I posted a video about OpenAI's sort of appeal to the new U.S. presidential administration to do what they call the OpenAI Economic Plan, a massive build-out of infrastructure to help support AI, mainly, to help U.S. maintain its innovation lead, as well as maintain a national security, economic prosperity, etc., and Adebayo, or Bio to his friends, has quite an impressive resume. Also, notice he's 71 years old. I mean, notice there's a lot of people in their 70s nowadays that are like, oh, this is going to be a very challenging chapter of my life, but I am happy to take it. And they go on to do some like crazy stuff in their 70s. And that used to not happen this often. But Mr. Bio, he's a founding partner, chairman, and chief executive officer of a Global Infrastructure Partners one of the world's premier infrastructure investing platforms, and a senior managing director at BlackRock. If you're not aware, BlackRock owns um, everything. So definitely this kind of uh, falls in line with what the OpenAI economic sort of proposal, the blueprint that they're rolling out, they're suggesting at least to Trump's cabinet. This definitely lines up with that. If they're planning to do this and they're serious about it, like I said, I do believe that they're going to be effective at doing this. They're going to make this happen. And certainly this new board member seems like they've got sort of the, the firepower to, to help push this forward. They might be one of the world's like uh, leading people on doing this sort of infrastructure build out globally, specifically like reaching across the globe, understanding the different sort of local intricacies, etc. And he's also a member of the boards of directors of BlackRock, Top Golf, Callaway Brands, Cosmos Energy Holdings, and Terminal Investment Limited. He was previously the lead director of Goldman Sachs Group. Also, it looks like he spent 23 years at Credit Suisse. So it seems like, as far as we can tell, a lot of the stuff is going to be kind of like targeted, oriented towards the new presidential cabinet that's coming in. But interestingly, the Biden-Harris administration does sort of one big AI thing kind of on its way out. And there's a few people that just do not like this. So in its last days in office, the Biden administration publishes a statement about restricting the export of AI chips. Now, NVIDIA does not like this. Not one bit. So according to NVIDIA, this misguided rule was a draft in secret and without proper legislative review. You might have seen this image flowing around, kind of like the three tiers from most permissive to most restrictive in terms of sort of data center development. Another term used here is sort of a US AI diffusion. 
So out of all the sort of infrastructure and tech and hardware that's sort of like built by U.S. or U.S. allies and partners, this rule, this proposal is basically trying to control where it sort of like diffuses to. So the countries in blue, those are the cool guys. And that's who we are okay with sort of being the most permissive for. Tier two is kind of in the middle, like, uh, we don't we don't know. And of course, tier three is the most restrictive. Those are the people that are sort of national security concerns, perhaps. But it does seem that this map is a little bit outdated. So January 13th, the White House posted this fact sheet ensuring U.S. security and economic strength in the age of artificial intelligence. So there's 18 countries that are on this list, the 18 key allies and partners, so they don't really have any restrictions. And for orders with collective computation power, up to roughly, you know, 1700 advanced GPUs. So that's kind of, there's no restrictions there either. They don't need a license and they don't count against national chip caps. And the overwhelming majority of chip orders are going to be in that category. Next, we have the slightly more sort of restrictive tier. And this one's going to be limited to, you know, hundreds of thousands of chips. So these are entities that meet high security and trust standards and are headquartered in close allies and partners can obtain highly trusted, universal, verified, and user status. So again, this is kind of some sort of a, a license that you would have to apply for, some sort of a uh, stamp of approval from the U.S. government, it seems like. And then with that status, they can then place up to 7% of their global AI computational capacity in countries around the world likely amounting to hundreds of thousands of chips. Next, we have the slightly more restrictive tier. And so the entities that meet those same security requirements and are headquartered in any destination that is not a country of concern can apply for the national verified end user, which is going to allow them to purchase up to 320,000 advanced GPUs over the next two years or equivalent to. And then we have kind of like one of the more restrictive tiers, so non sort of verified entities that are located outside of close allies can still purchase large amounts of computational power up to the equivalent of 50,000 advanced GPUs per country. And then governments can sign certain arrangements, certain sort of agreements, and that's going to be surrounded around AI, energy, and export controls so they don't sell to the countries we don't want them selling to. And if they sign that, if they agree to it, they can double their chip caps right up to 100,000 of today's advanced GPUs. And so those sort of countries of concerns are, you know, mainly China, Russia, Iran, but also Macau, Belarus, and other arms embargoed nations. NVIDIA same day does a blog post kind of uh, denouncing this move with in no uncertain terms. They say in its last days in office, the Biden administration seeks to undermine America's leadership with a 200 plus page regulatory morass drafted in secret and without proper legislative review. I actually did not know what this word meant. It's actually pronounced morass, and it basically means a complicated mess. They continue this sweeping overreach would impose the bureaucratic control over how America's leading semiconductors, computers, systems, and even software are designed and marketed globally. And by attempting to rig market outcomes and stifle competition, the lifeblood of innovation, the Biden administration's new rule threatens to squander America's hard-won technological advantage. So it's going to be interesting to see how this gets handled. NVIDIA is against it. But then again, I mean, they like to sell chips to everybody. This certainly also doesn't mean that they're wrong. Heavy-handed restrictions could create a lot of challenges. Let me know what you think about this. Is this a good thing that they're trying to do? Are you for it, against it? Let me know in the comments. In other news, Microsoft is back with the new version of Autogen, reimagining the foundation of agentic AI for scale, extensibility, and robustness. Autogen was a open source, pretty simple way to kind of put together AI agents that can do various tasks. We've covered all the different sort of versions on this channel from the very early one to kind of when they introduced the studio, which made it a lot easier, I think, you know, especially for non-technical users to use. The setup still required some know-how, but once you got past that, the sort of the website sort of interface was a lot easier to use. And this update represents a complete redesign of the Autogen library developed to improve code quality, robustness, generality, and scalability in agentic workflows. The feedback they received called for stronger observability and control, more flexible multi-agent collaboration patterns, and reusable components. So there's quite a bit to unpack here. We're probably going to do that in a separate video. I'm going to try to install it, run it, figure it out, and then do a full video on it. 
Argen's been pretty impressive and kind of uh, ahead of its time when they were starting out. There weren't that many other programs doing this. Also, there's a new open source text-to-speech model. It's very tiny, it's very fast, and it's very good. If you love that ASMR where they kind of whisper gently in your ear or, or tap stuff uh, while you're wearing headphones or whatever, I guess some people like really enjoy that. Well, you're going to love this model. Okay, Kokoro is insane. This AI is a groundbreaking TTS model with just 82 million parameters. It outperforms larger models and generates minutes of speech in seconds. Oh, and it's open source. Try it and see for yourself. It's available on Hugging Space, Kokoro, 82 million. 82 million, that's, that's tiny. So there's certainly going to be a lot of people building with this. If you are interested in building some of this, let me know. What do you have in mind? If it's not a secret. If it's a secret, just uh, whisper it, I guess. I don't know, those ASMR voices, I know people like them, but me, I just get kind of uncomfortable. Anyways, make sure you're subscribed, hit the thumbs up button, or I'll be doing the rest of my videos in that exact voice. I think we'll leave it there for today, although there are a few big things coming that we're going to cover in a different video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you next time.